Let's get a check of what's happening in the world of business. Our business editor, Kate Moody, say hi there, Kate. Hi, Tom. Now, more bad press uh, for Credit Suisse and how it may have helped American clients avoiding paying tax. Yeah, it's a story we've heard before. It's back again now. Uh, the results of a two-year investigation by the U.S. Senate Finance Committee suggest that the bank has continued to provide a safe haven for wealthy Americans to hide assets, even after being prosecuted for just that in 2014 and agreeing to reforms at the time. The Senate panel said it had been notified of at least 23 large undeclared accounts belonging to American citizens, including nearly $100 million held by a single family. That would mean the bank had violated the terms of its previous plea deal with U.S. authorities. It's unclear if or how the revelations might affect last week's bailout of the struggling Credit Suisse by its rival, UBS. Meanwhile, UBS has brought back an old hand to oversee that takeover. Sergio Ermotti, who served as CEO from 2011 to 2020, is coming back to the chief executive position, replacing Ralph Hammers. The bank said Ermotti's experience in carrying out past restructuring plans would serve UBS well as it integrates Credit Suisse's business. UBS shares up about 4% on that news. Separately, the Swiss government on Wednesday officially approved the $118 billion in guarantees that was promised by Switzerland's central bank as it sought to calm panicking markets in recent weeks. Russian energy giant Rosneft says it sealed a new deal to increase oil sales to India. The company did not specify the exact terms, but Russian officials have this week said that oil imports to India have soared more than 20-fold over the last year. India is among the countries that has benefited from the West's boycott of Russian energy as it started buying large quantities of oil and gas at a huge discount. Those sorts of partnerships have helped cushion Russia from the full impact of U.S. and EU sanctions, although this Wednesday Vladimir Putin made the unexpected admission that the measures could indeed have a negative impact. Clemence Waller has more. It's an unexpected backtracking from the leader of the Kremlin. For the first time since launching his full-scale invasion of Ukraine last year, Russian President Vladimir Putin has admitted that the waves of economic sanctions imposed by the West have not been ineffective. Illegitimate sanctions imposed against the Russian economy could, in fact, have a negative impact on it in the medium term. In recent months, the president had repeatedly insisted that the Russian economy was weathering the barrage of economic sanctions and that the government was adapting to the penalties, a claim that was, in part, backed by the International Monetary Fund. According to its forecasts, Russia's economic growth in 2024 should be half a point higher than that of the Eurozone, 2.1 percent against 1.6 percent. Some experts argue the Western sanctions were not as efficient as they could have been because while they did primarily target Russian exports such as gas and oil, it didn't target third-party countries for doing business with Russia. For example, the country is still importing fresh fruits and vegetables from Israel while it continues to sell its oil to India and China. There are also the links that Putin is building with other countries. And it is also a possible opening towards trade reinforcement with countries like India, Turkey, Pakistan and, of course, China. Despite the new trade ties, many Russian families are feeling the effects of an economic slowdown. Putin, however, said inflation would drop below 4 percent and that his government would support what he described as a positive trend. Finally, even leaders within the tech industry are worried about the huge leaps in developing artificial intelligence. More than a thousand scholars and industry figures have signed an open letter by the campaign group The Future of Life. They're calling for a six-month pause to the development of IA that is more advanced than GPT-4 level, uh, saying it represents a risk to society. Elon Musk and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak are among those who've put their names to the appeal. They said, quote, recent months have seen AI labs locked in an out-of-control race to develop and deploy ever more powerful digital minds that no one, not even their creators, can understand, predict, or reliably control. That, those concerns really echoing some of the things that I and many other people, I think, have thought uh, as we hear more and more about this emerging kind of technology, Tom. Yeah, it's going to be too, too clever for its own good, isn't it? And for our own good. Certainly for ours, yes. Thank you very much. Our business editor, Kate Moody, thank you for that.